Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at a single bolt check using AISC. Now, this is a pretty straightforward calculation, but CalcBook just makes it super easy and gives you a nice printout uh, when you just need to look at a singular bolt in tension, shear, or uh, you know, checking the combined forces of tension and shear. So, uh, for tension and shear, right, we use AISC 360 section J3.6. Um, if we're going to be looking at both combined uh, forces of tension and shear, that puts us into J3.7. Uh, which is really just a reduced tensile capacity. So even though it is using the combined forces, um, it's still compared against the tensile demand. Um, so we'll take a look at that in a second here. Um, and then we are going to use table J3.2 for FNT and FNV. That's the nominal bolt strength. So let's take a look at our problem statement, right? We are going to be using a three quarter inch diameter A325N. So the threads are not excluded uh, from the shear plane. Um, we are at a tension uh, demand of 15 kips, a uh, shear demand of nine and a half kips. And we're going to be checking the bolt for the applied loading using LRFD load combinations. Um, and we didn't state it there, but those are earthquake loads, seismic loads. And then a, a kind of a bonus check um, is what happens if we increase the bolt shear to 20 kips. And uh, we'll be doing this to sort of show the limitations of uh, the equation in J3.7. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. Uh, we can go ahead and click into our steel design. We can use the 15th or the 16th edition. Uh, we'll use the 16th edition for this calculation. Uh, click into our connection designs, and then we've added this single bolt check right here. Go ahead and click on that and click continue. Um, okay, so we can go ahead and select our uh, bolt size. So we have the three quarter inch bolt, right? And then we need to update our uh, nominal strengths of the bolt in tension and shear. Uh, we're going to do that based on a A325M. So if we open up here, we've got a nice little tooltip that takes you to the table. So we've got an A325, um, and we, our nominal tensile is going to stay at 90. So that's what we have already, so we can leave that there. And then our thread's not excluded from the shear plane. That's going to be an N, so A32N, and that's 54, and that's what we already have in here as well. So we don't need to make any changes here, um, but if you did have to make changes based on your bolt type, you can use this table to figure that out. All right, then we can go ahead and enter in our demands. Right, we are going to be using uh, ASC 716 LRFD, so we'll leave that here. Um, our tensile demand for uh, seismic, we said, was 15 kips. And our shear demand for seismic was 9.5. Okay. So for our tensile and shear demand, it's going to give us load combination 6, right? So that's just going to be earthquake 1.2 dead plus earthquake. Um, and then we go into our bolt capacity. Right, we're going to do a quick check, a check of the uh, bolt area, and then we need to actually figure out what our required shear stress is um, using the LRFD load combination. So our shear over area gives us 21 and a half KSI, and the reason we need this is because it goes into the uh, tensile stress uh, equation uh, for when you modify it to include the effects of shear stress. So that gives us our reduced tensile capacity. So we look at F prime sub NT um, is the minimum of this equation here, which includes that FRV term, um, but we can only go up to the capacity of the uh, FNT, the nominal nominal strength in tension. Um, in this case, we do have a slight reduced capacity here. So we have 69.21 KSI, uh, which is less than the 90 KSI nominal uh, tensile strength, stress, excuse me. Um, so we can take that value and then we go to our next step here and we are going to be using uh, equation J3-2 because we have both tension and shear and that gives us a capacity, a nominal capacity of 30.58 kips and then our design tensile strength, like I said, right, this compares against the tensile force. So our design tensile strength um, for a bolt subjected to combined tension and shear is going to be 22.93 kips and our demand is 15 kips in tension. Now, one of the things that we had in the problem statement was what happens if we increase this value of shear to 20 kips, right? And what happens is that you can't do that because it uh, basically makes that term inside of the uh, reduced uh, equation for tensile stress. Uh, it makes that term go to negative. So if we increase this FRV value, right, it's going to basically make this term really large, which will then make this whole side of the equation uh, below zero, which we can't have. So basically it means that the uh, available stress in shear has to be uh, higher than the required stress. Um, and it's 
says that in the AISC manual. I'll put that uh, that sentence up here right now. So as long as we're within that, uh, we are okay. Another thing to, to point out here is that, um, you know, CalcBook will check if you just have straight shear, right? If we del delete our tensile demand, it will just check it based on J3-1 for shear um, and vice versa. If we just have tension and no shear, it will just check it against J3-1 for just tension or just shear. So it will do all of those checks automatically and then obviously go into the combined check if needed. So that is a single bolt check uh, in CalcBook. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you would like 25% off your first month subscription of CalcBook, you can use the discount code uh, YTCB2024. Um, and we'll see you next time.